93. Calculate the molar solubility of AlOH3 in a buffer solution with 0.100 molar NH3 and 0.400 molar NH4+. Okay, now in order to do this problem, we do need some constants from the back of a textbook. So when I went to the back of the textbook and I tried to find out the KSP value for AlOH3, I knew that I had to find that KSP value because we're searching for molar solubility and with compounds that are soluble in solution and sometimes insoluble, right? Um, you have a saturated solu solution, so that's KSP. I also noticed that I'm dealing with a buffer solution. Keep in mind that buffer solutions are when you have an acid with a base, right? They're conjugates of each other. So I noticed that we have NH3 and we had NH4+. Keep in mind that the one that has one more hydrogen is the acid. So NH4 plus has to be the acid. And then the NH3 has to be the conjugate base. It's got one less hydrogen. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out balanced equations just to see, you know, if there's any similarities between the two of them. Now I did look in the back of the textbook and I could find a KB value. So I'm just going to go with that. So I'm starting off with my base, NH3. So maybe I'll just say NH3. And remember, that's aqueous. And with bases, they're always adding with H2O, right? You have to have water in your solution. And then that's a liquid. And then this is just an acid-base reaction, right? Double arrows indicating that we're dealing with equilibrium. And the base is going to gain an H. And then the acid H2O is going to lose an H. So we have NH4 plus, okay, so we're doing well here. And then H2O becomes OH minus. And that's aqueous. Okay, so let's maybe put this over here. And now I'm just going to write the equation for the KSP. With KSPs, you always start with your compound and you break it off into its two components. So in this case, I have Al. OH3, this is a solid, if it's molar solubility, comes to equilibrium, dealing with K values, and the two components is the aluminum and the hydroxide, right? OH, we should have seen that time and time again, so that never breaks up. So this would be Al plus OH minus, right? Hydroxide is always a negative one. You can use your subscripts to find out the charges of each, right? So the three crisscrosses up, telling me that the aluminum was a plus three. And since they're both charges, that means that they're both aqueous. Okay, make sure that it's balanced. I do see that I have three hydroxides, so I'm just gonna have to put a three in front of the OH here. All right, now here are my two balanced equations. Well, what's the similarity between them? Well, it seems that both of them have a OH minus, right? That's the link between these two. Doesn't matter that this one only has one OH and this one has three, it just matters that they both have hydroxides in it. So that's going to be the link in order to go from one compound, or not one compound, but one balanced equation to the other. Mainly because they gave us more information about the buffer one. So I can use this equation to get the OH minus, and then I can use that information to plug it in for the other equation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put this one down at the bottom for now. I'm going to get rid of these little highlights. We're just going to work with the top. They told us that we were in a buffer solution of 0.1 molarity NH3 and 0.4 molarity of NH4+. So NH3, we could say 0.100 molarity. And then for the acid, you have 0 0.400. Well, we just want to find out what the hydroxide ion concentration is. We don't know what that is. So I'm just going to label that as X. And it always matches the coefficient. So in this case, since you have one OH minus, it would just be one X. Okay, let's write out that KB expression. KB or any K value is products over reactants. So KB equals, 
Let's see. Concentration of the products. There are two of them. NH4 plus times OH minus divided by the NH3. Right? KB, we know, is the 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. We said that the NH4 plus was the 0 0.400. This was the 0 0.100. And this is going to be just X. So let's plug it in. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals... Seems like I got those two things on the top divided by one on the bottom. Zero point, and maybe I'll just move this over a little bit. Zero point four zero zero times x over zero point one zero zero. Let's do some cross multiplication, shall we? So this times by the point one, and then these two will just be by themselves, right? So 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth times 0.1 is 1.8 times 10 to the negative sixth equals 0 0.400 0, 0 times x. So for x, we're just going to divide by 0 0.4 on both sides. And now we're just going to find out x. Let's see. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative sixth divided by 0.4. And I get 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6. And that's a molarity. Now, if you want to, you could do the 5% rule just to see if, you know, we did assume here because we didn't have plus x or minus x with our numbers. But, I mean, this number is so small that our assumption is correct. And the x was the OH minus. So we now know that we have a hydroxide concentration of 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity. And I'm going to use that information to plug in to the other equation. So this one's now coming up. Now, since we found out that OH minus concentration, that's the number that goes here. Now, don't be tempted to times it by 3. This is all of the OH minuses that you got. You can't just miraculously times it by three just because the balance equation said so. This is only for ratio purposes. But as far as you have as many you got, you only have 4.5 times 10 to the negative six molarity. Now, do we know how much aluminum we have? No. So we're just going to label it as X. Keep in mind that no uh, solids in your KSP, so we don't even care about this for the uh, equilibrium value. Let's just see what we get. KSP equals, in this case, it's just the concentration of the two products. So we have Al3 plus and OH minus, and that one has to be raised to the third because there was a three coefficient in the front. So KSP was the 2.0 times 10 to the negative 32. This was X and the OH concentration is 4.5 times 10 to the negative six. Okie dokie, let's go for it. 2.0 times 10 to the negative 32 equals we have x times 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6, and that is cubed. So we could just find out what that number is. 4.5 times 10 to the negative 6 cubed. So that's a big number. But what we can do is we can just divide, right? This is the same as saying 9.11. 25, so not, not a big number, but I mean, pretty long decimal, that's what I meant there. 9.1125 times 10 to the negative 17th. And if we just move this up a little bit, 
If we just want to solve for x, what we will do is we will divide on both sides by that number. 9.1125 times 10 to the negative 17th. 9.1125 times 10 to the negative 17th. This cancels. And now we're just left with x. So let's see. 2 times 10 to the negative 32 divided by that answer. And I guess three sig figs. 2.19 times 10 to the negative 16th. Now, this is also molarity. And just know that, always go back to the question. They were looking for that molar solubility of ALOH3. Well, even though ALOH3 wasn't in our equilibrium expression, there still is a concentration for it. It just doesn't, you know, matter for the equilibrium expression. So you can treat this as saying, okay, I only had one ALOH3. And this is only 1x. So your molar solubility is always going to be the x that you're solving for. So in this case, the molar solubility is 2.19 times 10 to the negative 16th molarity of ALOH3. And that's that. That's all I got for this one. Not bad. What do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.